In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your game sprite animations in Live2D. In our previous video, I showed you how to set up your model parameters, so I'm going to be assuming that all of that is already completed for this video. And while I will be giving you a quick overview on how to animate in Live2D, navigate the workspace, and use the tools, for a more detailed explanation on these topics, feel free to watch this video where I show you how to make a looping animation. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our source file. So click File, New, and Animation. Depending on what you're going to use this model for, either click SDK for Unity or SDK. Just check which one's compatible for the software that you're planning on using. I'm going to be using RenPy, so I'm clicking SDK. When you create a new animation file, it's going to open up into this workspace, and this is Live2D's animation workspace. In the top left here, you have the project files for your animation. I'm only going to be working on one model at the moment, so it's only the jewel sprite that's here. In the middle left, we have your scene collection, so that's going to be where all of your different animations will be. And in the bottom left is your inspector, which basically has the details of your scene, like the name, FPS, and the canvas size. And in the middle here is the timeline, and the timeline is where we're going to be setting up our keyframes in the model. To start, select the model that you made, and then drag and drop it into the middle canvas. And because it's scaling at the original scale, it's going to be a little bit too big for my canvas size. So I'm just going to resize the model by clicking Ctrl Shift and dragging it to size. I'm going to be setting up the scene a little bit, so click scene. I'm going to change the name to idle because we're going to make the idle animation. And then I will scroll down and look for the FPS, which is the frame rate. and um, I'm going to change it to 60. Now this depends on what the calculate FPS of your model is, but because the calculate FPS of this model is 60, I'm going to go back here and change it. If your calculate FPS is 30, you don't have to change this. And then I'll extend the duration of this animation to about 6 seconds. You can make the duration of your idle animation longer or shorter, obviously, but I'm going to set mine to 6 seconds just so that I can loop the breathing easier. I'm going to extend the visibility of the model so that it's 6 seconds as well, and then I'm going to drop down the live 2D parameters so I can see what I'm working on. For the idle animation, my main actions are going to be the breathing and the blinking, and then my secondary actions can be uh, the hair swaying or the, the body and the head moving a little bit, but I'm going to start with the breathing. Scroll down to find the breath parameter, and what we're going to do is we're going to create keyframes in order to simulate breathing. To create a keyframe, you're going to drag this blue cursor to whatever time you want, and then you're going to drag the red slider on the parameter to change the parameter value. So what this is basically doing is it's telling the software, at this time, I want this parameter value. So I'm going to create keyframes along the timeline to simulate two breaths per six seconds for a breathing rate of 20 per minute, which is the normal human breathing rate. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the blinking animation. I'm going to be creating this manually because I need to bake the eye blinking into this animation file. If the game development software that you're going to use has live 2D auto blinking, then you don't have to do this. Everyone has their own method of animating blinking, but what I like to do is I like to set four keyframes equally spaced and then the keyframes are going to be open, closed, closed, open. This makes the eyes snap open and close, and I like how animated and cartoony it looks, but if you have your own preferred method of animating the blinking, then just do that. So baking physics is something that I really like to do to make the animation process a little bit simpler. What it basically does in Live2D is it reads the parameter values that you've set in the animation file, and then it calculates the physics based off of the physics groups that you've set up in the model. 
For idle animations, I like to connect all of the physics groups to the breathing parameter. I just add an extra input, breathing, and set it as an angle. And then I go back into the animation file to bake physics. For example, I like the hair to sway a little bit in the idle animation, so I'm going to add uh, the breathing as an input primer in that, and then I'm going to go back into the animation file, click animation, track, and bake animation from physics. It's going to show you all of the um, physics parameters and physics groups that you have, but I just want to connect the hairspray for now. So I'm going to select those, and then I'm going to click OK. So as you can see, it's automatically created keyframes for the movement of the hairspray. The way the animation looks depends on how you have your physics groups set up, so if you're not really happy with the result, go back to your model file and feel free to edit it in the physics group settings. And then you can go back into the animation file and redo the bake animation from physics. It's going to override the old keyframes, so you don't have to worry about deleting everything first. So while the movement of the hairspray that it created looks fine, I'm going to just manually edit it a little bit so that it looks a bit nicer and it loops nicer. And we're done with our idle animation. To create a new scene, you simply have to click one of these two buttons. The one on the left creates a brand new scene from scratch, and the one on the right duplicates the scene that we've just created. I want to create an idle animation where she's talking, so I'm going to duplicate the idle animation and name this idle talk. The visual novel that I'm creating this game sprite for doesn't have any voice lines, so I don't have to worry about lip sync. But if you do have voice lines where you want to match the movement of the mouth to the audio, some softwares have auto lip sync, so you can just connect the um, audio file to the model and it'll automatically do that. Or you can input your audio file in as a dot .wav file because Live2D only accepts dot .wav and you can just match the mouth movement manually. For this talking animation, I don't really have anything to match, so I'm just going to create a bunch of random mouth movements. An easy way to create like quick and snappy movements is to have the scene playing while you're adjusting the parameters. So I've just scrolled down to look for the mouth form and mouth open parameters, and then while the scene is playing, I'm just going to move it randomly. And I think it looks pretty nice for a generic talking animation. Back in our previous idle file, while we have our main movements complete, I think it looks kind of bland. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create secondary movements. What those secondary movements are just depends on what you want to see and what your model has. So for example, I kind of want a little bit of a subtle head swaying and a body swaying movement. And I definitely want her eyes to dart around just a little bit. So I'm going to create those. Starting with the head movement, I'm going to go down and look for angle X, and I'm going to set keyframes to make it so that she turns her head left and right pretty slowly, but just a little bit in the middle of the animation. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but for her body movement. I think that secondary movements and small details like these really add to the look of the idle animation, and if you're sort of confused or stuck on ideas on what to add, I'd suggest looking at gacha games that have live 2D and seeing what those movements look like. And I want the eyes to dart around a little bit, so I'm going to look for eyeball X. And I'm just going to make her look to the left and right at certain moments. A fun tip for animating eye movements, um, if you look at your own eye movements in a mirror or uh, within a video, you'll see that the, the movements are very fast and very sharp, unless you're tracking something. So I like to keep the keyframes for these very close together.
And then I'm just going to go down and add a little bit of movement to the mouth. I'm going to make it so that she smiles a little bit at the end before turning back to a neutral expression. And now that I'm done with the secondary actions, I'm going to make sure that it loops nicely. To do this, make sure that the parameter values on your very last frame match the parameter values of your first frame. So for example, if the value of eyeball x on your first frame is 0, you want it to be 0 at the very end. To export it, you're going to go to File, Export for Runtime, and select Export Motion File. To export every single scene, click Output All Scenes. If you only want to export one scene, for example you change something about idle talk, click export selected scene. Because this is going to be my initial set of motion data, I'm going to select output all scenes. And then I'm going to check the option that says bake lip sync and eye blink to motion. If you want to be able to use the auto lip sync or auto eye blink functionality in your software, make sure to leave this unchecked. These are the files that we just exported, and all of these are going to be our runtime files. Which means that these are the files that we're going to be using in the game development software. You should have the folder with the texture sheet, the MOC3 file, your model3 file, your physics file, and all of the motion files that you just created. As you can see, we have the idle and idle talk as two separate motion files. Now let's see what this looks like in an actual game. This is what her idle talking animation looks like. And this is what her idle animation looks like. Now that we're done with our base sprite, I'm going to show you how to set up expressions and toggles. In Live2D, there are two ways to create expressions, toggles, or differences in your game sprite. You can either create an expression file, which is a .exp3.json file, or you can create a new animation that's going to be exported as a .motion3.json file. Expressions can be layered on top of animation files and apply to all of them, while animations are their own individual sequences. How you want to use this functionality is up to you, but what I like to do is I like to set up hair differences or outfit differences or weapon differences as expression files while having her emotions as a separate animation file. So for example, if she's pouting, I'm going to just create a new animation file for that. So for example, for this animation, I want her to look shocked and a little bit surprised. Her mouth is open, her eyebrows are down, and I have this little cute emoticon buzzing in and out and that's going to be an animation file. For expression files, you want to have an individual parameter that you can toggle on and off. I'm going to create a new parameter and I'm going to call it darkened hair. And this is just going to be a toggle for her having darker hair. You can create different parameters for different costumes, but I don't have any other different costumes for her that I can show you, so... Um, I'm just going to have it be a hair change for now. And now that I'm done making this parameter, I'm just going to export it as a new file. Open your model into the Live2D Cubism viewer, which should have been downloaded along with the Cubism editor. Select File, Add, and Expression. And I'm just going to name it Darker Hair. Select the expression file that you just created, and then we're going to go down, look for the parameter, toggle it on, and then set it to 1. Control S to save, and it's going to automatically export the .exp3 file. So this is our model without the darker hair expression activated, and this is our sprite with the expression activated. So as you can see, the expression is added to the model and affecting the entire sprite while the animations are still playing. 
Live 2D is not just good for animation, but it also has a bunch of built-in functionality that are pretty useful when you're making a game. So as an example for the things that we've just learned, um, if we have a character and I want her to be animated and I also want her to have two different outfits, instead of having to create frame by frame animations for each of those different outfits, all I have to do is set up an expression toggle for the two different outfits and then create the idle animation, expression animations, and talking animation. And then in the game development software, whenever I want her to have the other outfit, I can just toggle it on and off. There are other more useful things that you can do in Live 2D, but it honestly depends on what software you're using, so I can't really go into depth. But uh, I hope you try it, and I hope that you can find something that's useful or fun to do. And thank you for watching. This program was provided by the support of the Tokyo Sponsor.